the multiplayer. That's right, what is a Halo game without its multiplayer? This section is gonna be long. It's also not gonna be entirely about the game itself but also everything surrounding it. Again, there's just a lot to talk about. Halo Infinite's multiplayer carries around a ton of baggage with nasty game design, really awful monetization, and a complete lack of basic features. I can't stress it enough. This game is broken and unfinished. Now, if I'm being honest, a Halo game to me isn't just its multiplayer. In fact, it's mostly its campaign. However, a good multiplayer can go a long way. I can go back to any old Halo game, load up a custom lobby, and play some chill Slayer against friends, or even just matchmake into a BTB game and zone out, or better yet, have fun playing weird experimental Forge maps. To me, this is what a good multiplayer should allow for, varying places for people of differing interests to have their own fun inside the same multiplayer sandbox. I'm not necessarily a sweaty tryhard, so to me, competitive isn't a priority, but I do respect that there is a competitive scene, and as such, it's nice that they have their own space, and likewise, I have my zone out plays, my zen games of custom B2B game modes. A, I also love engaging with community content too, hence why I've always had a strong love for Forge, something that not a lot of modern FPS games want to encourage. This is Halo to me, multiple play styles and a space for each one of them. What about Infinite? Well, it stumbles. This game has matchmaking, it has broken custom games, and ranked playlists, which I've yet to hear positive reception towards. And I'll be honest, none of my multiplayer itches are even scratched, not even a little, from Infinite's offerings. Not from its default game modes and matchmaking playlists, and not from its custom game support. This is a barren game. So what's wrong with the multiplayer? What exactly did 343 do here that is far, far worse than the multiplayer mode for Halos of Old? What exactly is bad with Infinite? Well, let's get into that. But just like with the single player, let's start with what I liked. No loadouts. I'll admit, I'm as shocked as the next guy that 343 completely ditched this, but that's right, everyone has the same starting weapons. No loadouts, no perks, no kill streaks. Sounds good to me. Halo has always been an arena shooter, so it's nice that we can at least go back to the rule of everybody spawning on equal footing, which, hey, I can't complain about. Spartan armor, visually at least. I mentioned this in part one, but yeah, I'll mention it again. I like how the armor looks. I'll talk more about this when I bring up customization. Lastly, no ADS. There is still weapon scoping, but it feels closer to classic Halo aiming. I personally wish this wasn't used for every single weapon, like the AR becomes fucking OP with it. Some people think ADS is necessary in a game, but I don't. It may seem just like a normal feature, but some FPS games really don't need it, because with ADS you have to balance how the player moves, whether or not they'll be much slower, or how accurate they'll be. Because then when you add in ADS, you have to make hip firing completely inaccurate. Halo Infinite doesn't do this. You can hip fire accurately, and aiming isn't too bad. Hey, this is a huge upgrade from Halo 5, so yeah, it's good for me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, what I liked about the multiplayer. What about things I didn't like? Okay, that list is going to be much longer, and to explain it, I'm going to have to go point by point to just illustrate everything wrong with this game's multiplayer content. There's a lot, believe me. So how's the actual gameplay? It's, uh, it's complicated. First, the combat feels pretty okay, if a little bare bones. I mentioned before how they took out loadouts and perks, which is a good change. That's a change I like. But there's also a lot of weird things to it that just kind of stand out. Sprinting and clamoring is one feature. I don't think I even mentioned sprint in my Halo 4 video since that was the least of that game's problems, but here it's a pretty prominent inclusion. It's weird. What clearly happened is 343 didn't want Sprint to be too overpowered, as it would absolutely ruin map timing. Again, anyone who's played Halo 4, and especially Halo 5, will remember that the maps in that game are totally unbalanced, since they're trying to account for sprinting players alongside advanced movement. Where an old map in, say, Halo 2 would have a pretty solid layout that was simple and old balanced, Halo 5 needed maps to accommodate even more movement features that Bungie didn't even think of, so the maps often ended up being a little bit of a mess. Halo works well without Sprint. Sprint just adds unnecessary layer to the combat, where you have to deal with having a speed boost, but not being able to shoot your gun right away. Meanwhile, in old Halo, everyone had the same top speed, and guns were always up. So enemy encounters were just a little more simple and fair. So what was 343 going to do with Infinite? Well, they decided to add Sprint, but make it, like, marginally better than just walking? Yeah. 
People at the time praised it for being the best of both worlds. Players who didn't sprint only moved just barely slower, like maybe a few percentages slower. Otherwise, players who did sprint were just barely faster. And they could do a really short slide move that really didn't have any uses, best I can tell. I still feel this is a weird cop-out. If 343 were concerned at all about there being sprint, why not just remove it from the game entirely? Do people really want sprinting that badly that they'll accept it even if it's just a dumb animation? Do new players get anxiety when they play an FPS game that doesn't have a sprint button like in their Call of Duties? Just set everyone at max speed and keep their weapons up, it's not that hard. Anyways, another inclusion is Clamber where you can just jump at a ledge and you climb up it. This isn't too bad of a feature, at least it's not the fucking jetpack ground pound moves from Halo 5. What really matters are things like combat, gunplay, and the sandbox. So how's that? I think the weapons are just kinda okay, some are decent, quite a few are bad, and also the weapon spawns are very problematic, I'll talk about that in a sec. The AR is decent, and with the scope it is now a far more viable starting weapon. The BR remains the king, although it's now a bit of a power weapon that actually has to be found on the map, as it's not usually a part of weapon start. Okay, I think I can get behind this. I still don't know how I feel about the pistol. It seems to have the same range as the Magnum from Halo Reach, maybe a bit weaker, but you can plink at enemies across the map. It has pretty decent accuracy. A gun I was shocked to actually enjoy was the Stalker Rifle. It feels just like a DMR. Super accurate, semi-auto fire rate, not a bad inclusion, I'll admit. And the Mangler, a pretty decent medium range projectile weapon that's pretty good. These are the main weapons that I think most people will go for. A handful of other weapons, however, I think are a bit unbalanced. Specifically, they're too nerfed. Some good examples are the Pulse Rifle, the Commando, the Bulldog, the Hydra, and the Ravager. They are way too fucking weak. The Pulse Rifle feels like they tried to turn a Plasma Rifle into a BR, yet the projectile speed is so fucking slow that it is so easy to just step out of the way, even with the generous lock-on. The Commando might be one of the most confusing guns they added. In campaign, it's not too bad, especially against cannon fodder enemies, but in multiplayer it may as well be fucking useless. I think it's meant to be like an in-between for the BR and the AR, except it is so marginally different from either of those guns that you're just better swapping to a BR for longer range or just an AR for spray and pray. The Commando just isn't good at either. Honestly, if they had made the AR a little less accurate, especially at medium range, then I could kinda see this being a viable gun, but as it is now, it's just useless. Why even swap to it? The Bulldog is genuinely a crime against Halo weapons. We lost our classic pump action shotgun to this fucking thing. The old school Halo shotgun was very short range, but had devastating damage output that could insta-kill players if you were at point blank range. Of course, it was balanced out because it had a very low fire rate, remember it was pump action, and it had a very long reload. Here though, the shotgun is just weird. It has a somewhat rapid fire rate, but it's still very slow, and even though it has a single magazine to reload, reloading it is still slow, especially compared to the other weapons. And yet, the damage output is so fucking low on this thing. Seriously, it takes multiple shots at point blank range just to kill anybody. Hey, the old shotgun? One shot, one kill. Made for a way more intense situation where you knew that if you were fast enough, you could get the kill off but not here. This piece of shit has no right taking over the shotgun roll, and it is a huge downgrade. As for the power weapons, these might be some of the most worthless pieces of shit I've seen in a multiplayer game. The Hydra confuses me, because I still don't know what its purpose even is. A low damage rocket launcher with virtually no splash damage, and the slowest reload animation of any weapon, made worse by the fact that it takes so many shots to kill somebody that you're better off pissing on them, because they'll kill you by the time you have to reload. The Ravager is a contender though. What a horrible gun. Okay, very low damage arcing shots, sort of like a concussion rifle, except way worse. It has a decent alt fire that's kind of good at area denial, but aside from that, it's just a really bad weapon. Precision guns like snipers feel a little off. People have noticed here that the sniper rifle is the hardest one to use, and I'm not sure if it's a result of the weapon design itself or the game's fucking netcode. But yeah, there's something screwy with it. I can't explain why, it just feels off. Melee weapons are alright, nothing special there. 
electric weapons. Oh God. Okay. So 343 seemed to try and introduce a couple guns that all have an electricity effect. This effect generates slow damage over time, can break shields, and more importantly, can EMP vehicles. Yeah, no longer do you have to rely on the plasma pistol, but here we got a pistol that can EMP, a sniper that can EMP, and also a grenade that can EMP. So now not only is the plasma pistol worthless since it's only good for popping shields, but everyone and their mom will see you trying that and will kill your ass before you get the shot off. Also, these electric weapons make fucking vehicles impossible to use. Have fun using the wasp when multiple people with electric weapons are able to EMP you out of the fucking sky. Vehicles seem to be much weaker here than in any other Halo game. The wasp is probably the best example. It's basically a hornet with no passenger seats and even less health. The banshee is basically unusable given how fast it is to blow up. Warthogs are kinda okay, but thanks to that location based damage you'll lose one wheel and then the warthog will be completely impossible to drive. losing all your momentum. The Razorback is at least pretty good, although I think that's only the case because it's not a big of a target from enemies since it's only a passenger carrier. Like everybody's going to be focusing on the Warthog with a turret instead of you. Anyway, tanks, scorpions and wraiths. Well, I'd like to talk about them, but I can't because I've barely used them in multiplayer. We, uh, we need to talk about how maps work in this game. The multiplayer maps. What is a Halo game without them? Maps vary from Halo game to Halo game, and even in some games that I love, there have always been maps that aren't perfect. Halo 1 definitely had the weirdest, with the most experimental maps of all sizes, with some weird, crazy gimmicks, especially when you consider where the series went in the future. But yeah, this is old school map design at its best, experimental and bizarre. However, it had plenty of its own solid arena maps, which I think still hold up pretty well, especially to this day. Some great symmetrical maps too, and a couple solid arena maps. Halo 2 had some stellar map design. Tight arena maps with a great flow, some solid BCB maps, and Zanzibar being a really fun asymmetrical map. Also, it has Lockout, which, come on. Halo 3 also had some great maps, even if they weren't as tight as Halo 2, but they were still pretty solid. A few really great arena maps, Guardian is a fan favorite, some more symmetrical BTB maps, and also a surprising amount of asymmetrical maps too. But yeah, Halo 3 also had a few maps that nobody really remembers. Halo Reach definitely had the weakest roster. A bunch of large arena maps, some big BTB maps, symmetrical and asymmetrical maps, and that's kind of it large open maps that, with DMR starts, turned into two teams taking pot shots at each other. 4 and 5 though, that's really where we start dipping into the bad stuff. Halo 5 at least gave us some smaller arena maps, except both games were very, how should I say, Call of Duty. Obviously I'm not saying every single map was like this. However, a good majority of them were, and they all seemed to branch away from traditional Halo map design. Like, there were less simple arena maps or big open BTB maps. Instead, they always went for something a little more complex, I should say. Like, okay, think of like the Halo 4 BTB maps. Instead of having a big open space, each and every one of those maps was full of useless cover and lots of drawn out lanes or streets or stuff to break up sight lines, which made even the biggest BTB map feel super claustrophobic. And this kind of carried over to Halo 5 as well. And you know what? This could totally be subjective, I fully admit it, but there is a completely different feel with Halo 4 and 5's multiplayer maps than with the older Halos. Too many lanes, too many pathways, too much cover blocking open sight lines. The Slayer maps, especially in Halo 5, feel way too claustrophobic, while the Warzone maps feel way too chaotic. But at the same time, those maps don't even feel big and open. Instead, it feels like it's made up of a bunch of smaller arena maps stitched together. Every multiplayer map feels like it's lacking in identity. Like there was no person who sat down and said to themselves, yeah, I'm gonna make a map like Exile. I'm struggling to find the right words to explain it, but they all feel like they were made by committee. There was no memorable arena map. Like old Halo, you had Damnation or Lockout or Guardian. There was no map like that from 4 and 5. Like seriously, aside from maybe one, which I think is even still a little overrated, the rest of them are so forgettable. And that even translates to the big BTB maps too, which even though Halo 4 was designed around BTB, its big team battle maps were fucking terrible. Halo used to be famous for having some really awesome large open maps, stuff like Blood Gulch or Zanzibar, or hell, even Valhalla. Actually, I take that back. Valhalla was ported over to Halo 4. It was awful. 
With loadouts giving players long ranged weapons, the open map became an annoying VR fest. So a huge chunk of the maps that used to be viable in the old game were now completely unusable. Because otherwise you were just going to get pot shotted by some guy who spawned in with a light rifle. Which once you notice this, this kind of explains why 343 maps always feel very claustrophobic. Their maps literally couldn't be this big and open because players would just abuse it. And yeah, this does tie into just general game design, but I do think it's important. The overly complex gameplay of Halo 4 and 5, either with stupid loadouts or really annoying advanced movement, forced these maps into identityless blobs just to keep players from breaking them. The old Halo combat was simple, so it was very easy to balance them with simple maps. And as much as I defend Bungie, you even see stuff like this with Reach. With the inclusion of loadouts, all of a sudden maps started to be a little too complex, just to account for players with either Sprint, or Evade, or Jetpacks. And that's absolutely what happened with Halo 4 and 5. With so many mechanics to balance, 343 were basically forced into a corner. So it's no wonder why a lot of these maps are very forgettable. So Infinite had to find a way to appease these different playstyles, and specifically, they had to branch away from their own usual map design. So it's a combination of uh, both design philosophies, I think. Like, there's a few maps that feel straight out of Halo 5, except maybe a little more simplistic. I think Recharge, Live Fire, and Streets are all examples of this. Just kinda circular arena maps with like one or two open spaces in the middle, and a bunch of routes orbiting it. Recharge feels a bit like Foundry in Halo 3, although it has a a little more space to move and rotate outside the main room. Live Fire is one that I think has kind of worn its welcome. Just two open areas, a path down the middle, and a handful of corridors in between. Streets literally feels like a Halo 5 map. Honestly, I think Recharge is the most solid of the infinite maps, at least the one I've had the most fun playing. Fucker! Piece of shit! Asshole! Cocksucking whore! Aquarius is a small indoor symmetrical map. Bizarre is an outdoor symmetrical map, really going for Halo 2 anniversary aesthetics. It's decent. Just that open area in the center though is way too annoying to move through, and you're gonna get plinked over and over from some guy camping in the doorway. Fragmentation I thought initially was a pretty fun map, but the more I play it, the less I like it. Someone literally took Valhalla, skewed the bases so that they were slightly diagonal from each other, and then added giant cliffs in between the bases just to route everyone into four pathways. This combined with the high player counts make these areas complete clusterfucks, because they all converge at the same points. This whole roundabout section is absolute chaos. High power. This map is kinda weird because it feels almost identical to the map Highlands from Halo Reach. There are too many similarities for it to be a coincidence. The asymmetrical bases, the base layout itself, the fact that there's a ship battle going on in the skybox is just like Highlands. The only difference is that instead of this area in the middle, it's replaced by a bottomless pit. Now Highlands for Halo Reach was made by Certain Affinity and published by 343, not Bungie. So this to me seems like it could be an obvious homage. Might even be the same people who made the map too. Behemoth is a solid symmetrical vehicle map, although a little big for just 4v4. Deadlock is another ho-hum map, and I can barely remember it. Launch Site. This is another weird Halo Reach homage, where I'm guessing this map is meant to be a reference to the map Countdown from that game. It has similar rooms and layouts, except the whole general flow of the map is completely different. Instead of a symmetrical circular arena, we have this weird linear pathway from one side of the map to the other. This pathway has a bunch of corridors on the side, and then it also has a grav lift on one end too. This feels like it's meant to be an attack or defend map, or a one one flag capture the flag map. I feel like this could work for an 8v8, although with the higher player counts for BTB, this definitely feels too small for 12v12. And those were the maps that we got at launch. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since launch, 343 has added in a whopping whole two new maps. Catalyst and Breaker. Catalyst is a nice looking map, but otherwise it's just pretty alright. A symmetrical 4v4, nothing to write home about. Breaker, such a weird map. It feels like a Halo 4 map. And yeah, those are all the multiplayer maps. Wow. I think the thing that really stands out to me is just there aren't really any amazing maps. Like some are serviceable, a couple are bad, but they're all just okay. Like nothing stands out. And it's been a year too, like surely people should have found their favorite map by now. But no, they're all just kind of interchangeable. There is no Lockout, or Guardian, or Blood Gulch, or Valhalla. 
Anyway, the real problem that these maps have is the random weapons and vehicle spawns. This is a game decision that 343 was absolutely insistent on, especially since Halo 4. They wanted all the maps to have random weapons. The reason it didn't work for Halo 4 is because everyone had a loadout. And with random weapon spawns, people were afraid of going out just to risk picking up a gun that they couldn't predict would be in a certain location. So instead, everyone just hid in their corner and took pot shots from across the map. At least here, since there's no loadouts, that doesn't really happen. Like, you do have an incentive to go grab power weapons. But these random spawns, once again, it keeps players from truly knowing the map layout. There's less emphasis on map control, because why run to the center to pick up a power weapon when it could either be a rocket launcher or a skewer? Two guns that are pretty good, I'll admit, except one of them is way better at a distance. Not when you're at point blank range from a player because both of you decided to run to the center of the map. Or better yet, weapon spawns where you can either get a BR or a commando or god forbid a pulse rifle. What's even more annoying is that all the players have a visor scan mode. Oh god, I didn't even mention this up until now. There is a button that you can press with a pretty short, almost instantaneous cooldown that gives you a tactical scan of the map. It doesn't show enemies, but it does show everything else. Weapons, grenades, equipment, and everybody has this. This isn't a piece of equipment you have to pick up, it is a button that you can press on your keyboard. So once again, map memorization and map control are just fucking useless now that every player can do a quick sweep of the area and see what guns are where. This has a horrible effect on map awareness. What's the point in memorizing routes and layouts if everybody can just press a button to see where every gun is? This is such a weird inclusion. I guess Halo 4 had a bit of this as well, but I neglected to mention that just because that was the least of that game's problems. But here the map balance is just so screwy. This doesn't play like a classic Halo game anymore. Instead with random weapon spawns, it plays like just a new beast entirely. One I'm not entirely sure I like. Also vehicle spawns. They are also random. Just like with guns, vehicles will spawn randomly. You might get a tank, or you might get a mongoose. Oh. But that's not even the half of it. In BTB, vehicles will occasionally be dropped in throughout a match. However, out of possibly sheer incompetence, 343 decided in their infinite wisdom to have vehicle drops be completely random too. Across both teams. Meaning, and I shit you not, that there will be matches where one team would get like ghosts and warthogs, while the other one would get scorpions and wraiths. Of course, 343 said that they would fix this, and they did kinda. They basically made tank spawns a little more common. However, it is still lopsided. There are gonna be matches where one team gets all the power vehicles, and your team will get nothing. Again, why not just make the vehicles identical for either side? Ah, <sighs> yeah. That's everything wrong with the map designs. Some potential there, but once again, completely ruined by 343's really weird and questionable design decisions. Anyway, I've talked at length about the multiplayer's combat and gameplay, but I think we need to start acknowledging the weird, skymy elements of this game. Let's talk about armor customization. Now I think some of the armor designs actually look pretty good, even though others look like absolute garbage. What can I say, 343 sure knows how to make ugly armor. The samurai in World War 1 trench armor absolutely feels out of place. God forbid we have a game with a consistent art style, and not people with fucking Power Ranger armor and pink weapon skins running around. Fuck me. Halo 3 had one semi-wacky armor set, which was the Hayabusa armor. It was a little unique looking, while the rest mostly conformed to the same military aesthetic. Halo Reach doubled down on this with an even bigger variety of helmets and armor that all stuck to this same unified aesthetic. Tactical military sci-fi. Even some of the more out there armor still fits pretty well with everything else. And once again, there was a single standout helmet that was weird. 343 desperately wants Halo to look like an ugly casual game full of cartoony, ugly armor and weird skins. I mean, just look at MCC. This is literally their MO. Stick off-putting anachronistic armor into a game where it doesn't belong. But at the very least, the default starting cores are pretty decent and yeah, I'll admit, it looks pretty good. They're slick, it's angular and flush to the body, as well as not looking like plastic anymore. Halo 4 and 5 armors were hideous, with disproportionately large chest plates, armor that just sticks out from the body, pieces that are super overly impractical with bulging round pieces and hilarious looking designs, and just generally this very cheap looking plastic vibe to it. Why 343 is obsessed with making people look like Power Rangers is beyond me. Oh no. 
Infinite seems to be going for a Halo Reach meets Halo 3 approach. The armor is streamlined, it's packed together, nothing hangs off of it awkwardly, and there's a little bit of tactical flair to it, but just everything looks pretty nice. Although when you equip it in game, that armor actually looks hilariously bad because the aforementioned lighting engine is not up to snuff. Look, seriously, the Halo Reach armor looks better in Halo Reach than it does in Halo Infinite. What's going on? That goes for all the other armor variations too. Like look at these amazing colors. I especially love the shiny metallic armor. Hmm, looks good in the menu screen. A lot of people were pulling out their wallets to buy the amazing gold armor skin, yet in game it looks like this. Yep. So have fun equipping your $12 armor color, no refunds lol. Oh yeah, the armor coatings. This might be the single biggest thing that killed customization. No longer can we choose our two colors. Instead, we have to choose from a stock list of generic armor colors and patterns, most of which we actually have to buy from a store just to equip. Are you fucking kidding me? I now have to pay for the color red? Are you fucking insane? They also added in armor kits, which have a unique armor coating and armor set, but are entirely locked, meaning that you can't modify anything. So if a kit has a very unique looking color to it and you want to have that for your Spartan, but you also want to have different armor, well good fucking luck because you aren't allowed to customize it. This is literally the first Halo game since Halo 2 where I can't equip my tried and true white and red armor colors. Halo Infinite literally has less variety than a game from 2004. That's the state the industry has come to. And look, there is a skin that matches exactly what I'm talking about, except it's locked to a fucking kit, so I can't equip my own helmets or armor to it, or even my own emblem. Instead, I'll just look like an MLG team fanboy wearing this, and I'm gonna look identical to everybody else with this equipped as well. Fuck you, 343. Just like in single player, this is the buggiest Halo multiplayer to date, and oh boy, it's a not get through unscathed. I hope you're prepared for desync, because oh man, do we have desync galore here in this game. I'm not even joking when I say about once every match, you'll have like 10 or so seconds where the game temporarily poops itself. You'll see players rubber banding, and then you'll teleport somewhere completely different and immediately die. And that's just the big noticeable netcode problems that everybody talks about. There's a ton of smaller issues too. Like for starters, the whole game feels I don't know, really janky and rough? I can't describe it, but the controls feel like super jerky. It's especially noticeable when you die, like look at how the camera jerks around violently. But even as you're playing, especially when you're trying to aim, there is just a weird jerkiness to everything. I don't know how to describe it, it just feels unfinished. And this is a year after launch, by the way. Anyway, that's, uh, that's everything Halo Infinite has to offer. Yep, that's it. This is the final and most damning section in this whole review. Halo Infinite is a live service game with a battle pass and it has no content. Now these sound like two separate issues. The fact that it's a live service game and all the content that's missing. But the longer this game has set out to rot, the more we're really getting the picture that these two are one in the same. To start, I think Halo Infinite being a free-to-play live service game is already an unforgivable strike towards its quality. It will forever be a tier below the rest of the Halo games, even if it was decent otherwise. I fucking despise free-to-play, microtransaction-heavy live service games, and Halo Infinite is just another example of why. The in-game shop is fucking terrible. And it's a great example of everything wrong with modern gaming. I actually played Halo Infinite during its first flight, and its second flight. But do you know how I knew this game would be shit? Do you want to guess? You want to know how I became a fucking prophet and guessed that this game was going to be awful? It was during those flights, when the game was completely broken. The gameplay was stuttery, netcode was borderline unplayable. Shockingly worse than it is now, that's even possible. The game was horrendously buggy, to the point where every person who was praising Infinite at the time, I am still convinced they might have been corporate plants. I'm serious. I don't know how you could look at that early buggy release and say that was a decent game. Anyway, that's besides the point. That game was buggy, and it was in a god-awful state. Totally unpolished. Even the menu was broken. I just can't describe how bad a state this game was during those first few flights. Yet, despite this, despite everything broken, there was one feature that was working flawlessly. The fucking store page. 
I shit you not, even when the gameplay was in such a rough state that it was borderline unplayable, 343 made sure that their storefront was working just fine and dandy for that first flight. So I saw this, and I also saw how a lot of the armor was locked in the store, and I just knew, I knew that this was the game's true colors. Halo Infinite was going to be an awful, content lacking free to play microtransaction grind fest. I literally can't illustrate this enough. The writing was absolutely on the wall to the point where you would have had to been kind of stupid just to think that 343 weren't about to pull off the greatest con in the Halo franchise. Yet tons of shills, I, I mean influencers, really tried to ignore this. I cannot stress this enough. Halo Infinite being the free to play trash that it is now was absolutely visible during those early days. It was plain as fucking day. No XP progression. All armor locked in the shop. We all knew. There's been a weird rewriting of history by all those shitty influencers. Well, I loved Halo Infinite during the early days, but the full release was so full of microtransactions. I don't know where they dropped the ball. No, they are lying to you. This was noticeable on day fucking one. And Anyone who says otherwise is simply trying to cover the fact that they were one of the many misleading reviewers who hid this fact from everybody else. Because no one was bringing this up. So yeah, this was part of the plan the entire time. I called it. Ever since Infinite announced that they're going free to play, I knew that this game would become a microtransaction hell full of cosmetics and armor locked behind a paywall. When they announced their fucking coding system, yet again I called it, yep, they'll basically sell hundreds, maybe thousands of armor coatings just so that if you want your perfect armor color combo, you'll have to cough up money for it. And people sit here with these microtransactions and are wondering to themselves, well, why doesn't the rest of the game have content? It's because of the microtransactions, you moron. It's because the game isn't supposed to give you content when instead it's supposed to milk your wallet as dry as it can. And free to play games do this by just barely putting out enough content on a regular timeline just to keep you pay pigs throwing in more money. That's what happened. The only reason people are noticing it now, and especially with 343, is just because 343 happen to be shit at their jobs. So not only are they a scummy studio, but they're also massively incompetent as well. Just like every Halo game that came before, updates will slow down because they simply don't know how to prioritize content updates. Simple things like patches, bug fixes, no, that is way too hard for 343. You know, maybe if they actually spent time making their own damn games instead of outsourcing every single fucking feature to another studio, maybe they'd know how to code a proper netcode by now. But nope, it's still broken, it's still unfixed, but you can sure still spend money in the game, yippee! I still scratch my head at these people who saw that Halo was going to be free to play. They saw the train coming from a mile away, yet they still stood on the tracks with a bewildered expression. Huh, why is there less Halo content here than in any other game? Oh really? You didn't realize that when they would turn Halo into a live service free to play game, there was going to be a complete gutting of staple features? Did you really not think that? Did you not realize that when they got rid of basic color choice options that maybe they were going to get rid of other stuff too? Did you really not know that? But yeah, Infinite has no content, barely any new maps, barely any new customization. Season 1 lasted 6 months. Now season 2 is going to last for about 12 months, with the same recycled content repeated over and over. It's actually kind of interesting how this weird psychological exhaustion has formed in the brains of a lot of Halo fans, where the lack of content is just this domino effect that completely destroys the experience. It's almost hard to describe, so I'll try my best to put it into words. Every single thing about this game, not even just from a content standpoint, but mainly from its inherent design, is an additional hurdle that every single fan of the old Halo games, or just people who are fans of good games in general, have to get over. If you only give people a couple hurdles, sure, you'll lose people, but plenty of other people will stay on board. Simplistic open world campaign, not a lot of maps, not a lot of game modes. Those are a few hurdles that maybe people would get through. However, you start to add on even more crap. No forge, no co-op. Now people are starting to get a little worried. No, it's no longer a small challenge. It's something you gotta commit yourself to just to find enjoyment in the game. I think most people would already drop it by there. But Infinite goes even further. Because here come the big hurdles. Free to play live service model. Microtransactions 
for armor and colors, broken netcode, no XP progression system, and a battle pass. With this many hurdles, no one's gonna play your game. You have just killed off most of your player base, or at least most of them. I say that because Halo Infinite didn't kill 100% of its player base, only 98%. So kudos to those that managed to stick around for that long. Sort of like the 1% of bacteria that aren't killed by brand name hand soaps. You guys managed to stick it out. But with this lack of content, it's almost become a rubber band situation, where all these things stacked up on top of each other completely override the things that players would be able to deal with previously. So basically, all of these hurdles that might have been tolerable to players before are now completely intolerable now. So 343 can't simply add in a few features and hope that players will return to the game, because players are so burnt out by no content that they aren't satisfied with a little nibble of more appetizers. They want a full course meal. Of course, the longer 343 wait in getting customers those updates and that much needed content, people are only getting hungrier and hungrier. And it's reaching a point where unless they add in or fix every single feature that people want, players aren't gonna be happy. Like, I'm guessing quite a few people watching this video have played Infinite. And let me ask you directly, what would it take for you to come back to the game and actually like it? Would it be if they simply added Forge or campaign co-op? No, of course not. It's until they fix the whole damn list of missing features. That's what I'm getting at. Like, here's what I mean. Imagine if Halo Infinite launched with even a handful of those features, or even just half of them. I think that people would be way more forgiving towards the content updates. Like again, I'll ask you guys, even if Halo Infinite was still a shitty live service game, it still had microtransactions, a battle pass, an open world campaign, and even lacked co-op. However, it had fixed netcode, a free match-based XP progression system, and a buttload of multiplayer maps. I'm talking about a bunch of remakes from older maps too. Imagine if Infinite had more maps than any other Halo game that came before it. I'd wager that would be at least enough for most people. However, because 343 didn't do this, the demand from players is ironically higher. So if 343 did everything I just listed, if they fixed the netcode, if they gave us a match-based XP system, and they gave us a buttload of maps, it would still be lacking because players now want everything. They want even more. Simply adding in a couple game modes or a few more maps will never be enough. 343 starved its players, and they are hungry. At the end of the day, I'm not sure whether or not 343 not delivering on these promises at launch is incompetence or just laziness. Is this just out of being too lazy to program in bug fixes or patches? Or are they genuinely too stupid to be able to understand how to make multiplayer netcode? Halo 2 came out almost 20 years ago and it is leagues better than what 343 was able to pull off now. Hell. Quake 1 has been around for over 25 years and they had pretty solid fucking netcode for a game that was made during the era of dial-up. It also might be out of malice too. I mean, they were disingenuous in the marketing of this game. Absolutely. The lead up to Infinite, they were lying to our fucking faces. They were making false promises, being super flaky in regards to their roadmap for the game. What, you guys want content updates, fixes, patches? Yeah, we're, uh, we're getting around to it. Any day now. It may be that 343 are fully aware of what they're doing and they just don't care. They're here to make a quick buck and are planning to jump ship when things go south. 343 is like an electrician you hire to fix your wiring, where they'll say it'll take a few days to fix it, instead it ends up taking anywhere from six months to two years, and then when they leave you find that they stole your wallet and your car keys and they fled town. So that's Halo Infinite's content. There's literally nothing here. It's a fucking shell of a game. Like seriously, why would anyone want to stick around here? There is no progression system. Everything is locked behind the store, meaning you have to pay with real money. The game is reliant on the battle pass system, which I fucking despise. And on top of all of that, it takes 343 so fucking long to drop more content. Maps, game modes, fucking patches. 343 takes their sweet time. I cannot wrap my head around how long it is going to take for this game to be in a somewhat acceptable state. Like seriously, look how long it took for MCC to get to where it is now. And even now, it is still somewhat buggy. With Halo Infinite, it may just take another 10 years. It's so bad, I can't stress this enough. It is just so bad. I'll be honest, you guys. I 
don't really see where Halo can go from here. People were fucking convincing themselves that Infinite would save Halo, and that Halo would finally be back. Like Halo would show up out of nowhere and be this huge return to form. Yeah, the king is back, baby. This is totally gonna bring us back to the glory days of Halo 2 and 3. Yet, as hopefully evident by this video, this wasn't the case at all. I think the thing that has truly killed Halo isn't just 343, although they did pull the trigger. I'm mainly talking about everything surrounding Halo. I'm talking about the Halo community, at least the new one. The Halo community is kind of pathetic. I used to unironically consider myself part of this community way back when it was still thriving and fun. Back when Halo 3 reigned supreme. Back when machinimas were basically their own video category on YouTube. Back when custom games were still popular and the games were still in Bungie's care. But damn, this place has basically been on life support since Bungie left. You see, what happened to Halo is a fate that many communities suffer through, where a mainstream larger audience is sought after, and as a result, clueless chuckle fucks are brought in to water down everything. Now all of a sudden you have people who want Halo to be Call of Duty, or Fortnite, or Apex, people who genuinely started playing Halo when Halo 5 released, people who look at those older Halo games and go, ew, that's too weird for me, I need it watered down. This is the kind of audience that destroys entire franchises. I specifically started noticing this when people who were critical of 343 and its many bad changes to Halo started to be labeled as toxic. What? Toxic? Are you serious? This idea started to circulate that you have to play nice, that making fun of 343 was totally off limits, and that only a true Halo fan loves the newer games. You fake Halo fans are just constantly complaining and whining. God, I fucking hate this mentality. I think there's no worse fan for any kind of art form, be it a game, a movie, a book, what have you, than the fan who will eat shit on their plate and tell you that it's good with a straight face. Like somehow that makes you a toxic fan for not liking a bad thing? Like seriously? How do people like these function in life? Are we not allowed to call shit shit anymore? Are people just seriously too fragile to hear that their favorite thing is shit? Anyways, if there's one culprit I want to point to, I have a list, and they are all on YouTube. The Halo YouTubing scene might be one of the most hilarious little bubbles I've witnessed in the last decade, specifically once Halo 4 launched. I briefly mentioned in my Halo 4 video how that game spawned a weird brand new genre of Halo YouTubers. We instead now have endless news channels that just speculate about new content. Endless speculation. Endless speculation. Because when the games are shit, you just gotta make up stuff to be excited about. Welcome back, Halo followers. Today we have tons of Halo news, including a new trailer. Hey everybody, we have huge Halo Infinite news today. Welcome back, Halo followers. We have an insane amount of leaks for Halo Infinite. I haven't seen anyone make this connection, but to me, the Halo YouTubing scene is sort of like the real-life equivalent of that Mega64 video for the news network that only covers Dark Souls. And we've already had news of a potential follow-up sequel that is in the works. Breaking news! We talked to the creators of Dark Souls 4! They say they're not making this game, but we don't believe them! It's gonna be its own game, and it's gonna have its own campaign and multiplayer. And it's gonna be gritty, and it's gonna be tough! Looks like it's gonna be the Dark Souls of weather! I think that's what I despise the most out of Halo YouTubers. They are way too forgiving towards a company that just wants their money. Like if you get your money stolen by a scammer, then that scammer comes back to you, apologizes, they're still not gonna give you your money back, but they need more money because next time, they'll be genuine and won't scam you again. I'd say most people would say, fuck off, but these guys? But what we all do know is that 343 believes that codings gives the player more options than ever before. I don't think they'd go out of their way to market codings as an expansion to customization if they didn't fully believe it was. I think all in all, we just need to slow down. We need to observe that, yeah, codings are going to be different from what we're used to, and some people might miss out on something. But there's a whole new realm of possibility, an option in places we didn't have so before. 343 will change, they say. Their next game will be better, they say. Halo Infinite, to me, is that I know it's going to be great. Right. I know at some point it's going to be amazing. And even as Infinite is being lowered into its 
fucking casket. We have people salivating over tiny, meaningless updates. Ooh, a battle pass. What the fucking do? I can now equip armor that's been in the game for a year. Yippee. What I am most excited for is they are finally, 303 is finally fixing the watchdog coding from Halo 5, the max rank skin I've been waiting for for a very long time. And oh boy, they're adding in a forge mode that will surely save infinite. I feel like this is going to save Halo infinite. This update is going to turn things around and this might really start drawing a lot of people in. I think it's only going to get better with time. It's not like this game is fundamentally fucked and rotten at its foundation. It's not like 98% of the player base has jumped ship already. And even if they add in Forge, it still won't fix the broken net code. At a certain point, this just gets sad. But the real reason I hate this community with my very being is a little more simple. And when I say community, I'm referring specifically to the new Halo community. I'm talking about players who will only play Infinite or only played four and five. I'm talking about people who legitimately don't remember that 343 wasn't always the developer for Halo. And there was a period of time where people didn't have to constantly fucking beg for basic features and patches in a $60 game. These people probably don't know that games used to have these features right out of the box. You used to not have to wait for them. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. The reason I hate this new community has to be the sugarcoating. The amount of ass kissing all towards a developer that is just undeniably awful. It's so weird and cult-like. I have never seen anything quite like it before. Sometimes I think 343 Industries gets way more criticism than they probably actually deserve. We shouldn't necessarily always undermine the good things that have come from Halo because of things that 343 Industries has done. I think most people are familiar with the concept of the Overton window being the metaphorical range of acceptable public opinion. It usually refers to politics, but here I think it actually works towards Halo and can illustrate just how sensitive this community has become in the last decade. You see, the current range of acceptable dialogue towards Halo for mainstream brand saved Halo fans, I'm talking about the kind of people who probably visit the r slash Halo subreddit once a day and stuff their faces full of butterfingers and get all giddy and excited when they see a 343 employee writing a fake update post that is totally gaslighting them and making shit up. But for this type of Halo fan, the current range of acceptable dialogue is a stretch of opinions where on one end, you can say that 343 is amazing and every new Halo game they've made is great. On the other end, the most you seem to be able to say against 343 is, well, Infinite may not be great, but it's not their fault. It's daddy Microsoft's fault. Leave them alone, okay? They're in a woo teeny tiny developer. Well, I'm sick of it. This range of discussion is so narrow that when you step outside of the boundary, you've got these dick writers saying, whoa, bro, did you actually just imply 343 should, should be, should be fired? Wow, dude, that is not cool. Did you know that 343 are trying their best and they've only messed up 90% of the time? And the people still there at 343, they are trying, they are trying hard to get the game up on its feet. I'm talking to friends right now, there is still a passion in 343 to get Halo Infinite going. Sure, they lie and they openly admit that they have no desire to fix their broken games, but come on, man, you gotta be more respectful to them. Good God. I fucking hate this kind of attitude. What, are we actually not allowed to seriously call out problems when they occur? I do want to say, I do want to give props to 343 because I do think they are a very ambitious studio in ways that a lot of other studios aren't. The fact that the Master Chief Collection works at all is insane. Like the fact <laughs> that you true. can, the fact that you can match make between like what, like eight different <laughs> game engines and it seamlessly cross it. Like that, that is, Twitter. I don't know of any other thing that does anything even remotely yeah. like that. Why is there some unspoken rule of etiquette when discussing 343? Why can't anyone just stop huffing their farts and call it as it is, which is that the game and the developer is horseshit. 343 is a fucking terrible developer, full of terrible people run by terrible people. They are a bad studio at their core. How this has become controversial in any way is beyond me. It all seems to be a big effort on 343's part to engage with the community and make the best possible game alongside with us.
And how 343 has managed to get away with this shit, while well, every other studio that would try to do something like this, or even try something close to being this scummy, they will infinitely get more shit. When a company like DICE under EA pull shit like this, the entire fucking community revolt. The Battlefield community revolt. They do not take that shit lying down. When any other studio tries this shit, lying to the public, adding in anti-consumer business practices, or even shows little to no respect for the franchise they're developing for, they are dragged through the mud and skinned alive by their communities. As they should. Hell, fucking Valve gets more hate on a daily basis than 343 has in its entire existence. There are mods where you can kill Gabe Newell, yet you even suggest that Bonnie Ross and Kiki Wolfkill or Frank O'Connor need to be let go, and oh shit, you just crossed the line in the Halo community. It's so insane to me to see these chuckle fucks running around in circles over 343. People joke about there being a Halo cycle. Here's the real Halo cycle. 343 lies to us. The Halo community gets a little huffy. 343 jingles a key in front of their faces. They calm down, rinse and repeat ad nauseum over a period of 10 years. I just think it's so annoying to see these same people who jumped on the bandwagon of thinking Halo Infinite would be amazing and that 343 would be awesome, now pretending like they were critical of 343 from day one. And only now they're angry. Usually they'll cope by saying stuff like, well, the game wasn't as bad as it was one year ago, even though, yeah, it was. We established that. I was there in the flight. The signs were absolutely there. Except these spineless, disingenuous fucks didn't mention it once. Again, I never saw any of them. Not a single one of these fuckers mentioned the store during the closed flights. Not one single time. Not to their audience, not online, not anywhere. I think customization in this game is off to a great start. Of course, there is a big paywall locked behind some stuff. I think some stuff are expensive to buy outright, but hopefully those are also the same things. You can just go straight in and put, uh, earn with the battle pass. Of course, I think it's unreasonable to expect all this to come for free when at the end of the day we are playing this for, for free. You know, it's 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 a business after all. This is what I'm trying to drill into your heads as you watch this. These people who act like they want Halo to be saved and they're super against 343 being evil and that 343 needs to be held accountable are absolutely disingenuous. They are willing to lie about a game's predatory anti-consumer practices only until it becomes too big to lie about. Then they'll jump ship and act like they were on our side from the beginning. Uh, no. No, you weren't. Hey, remember when armor coatings were announced, like fucking months before the game even went into flights, and everyone with an IQ above room temperature could easily predict? Oh yeah, 343 is obviously going to use this to sell a shitload of skins and force people to pay for their ideal color. We knew that from day one, yet these same people were trying to downplay it trying to say, eh, it's just coatings, it's just cosmetics. Maybe 343 will change it? Not once in their 10 years of existence has 343 ever changed something for the better. When people complain about something in a 343 Halo game, there is nothing 343 will do to fix it. So all this, oh whoa, let's band together Halo bros and fight the studio, all that shit doesn't work. Because they took your money already, they're done with you. They're running off to the next town to pull the same trick on someone else. This community and all these fucking parasites that have infiltrated it will still support a studio that hates them. Yeah, don't forget morons, 343 fucking despises you. You know what, let's talk about that, 343. I briefly touched on 343 in my Halo 4 video, but I think it's time we have a look at the studio behind the scenes. I have not seen a studio this incompetent or awful in a long time. Seriously. I've seen studios that are bad at bug fixes, studios that fail to put out regular content, studios that lie to their audience about the roadmap of their games, and even studios who are willing to make a quick buck at the expense of their game's quality. It is rare where I see a studio that has done all of the above and continues to outdo themselves even more. 343 is genuinely bad. Not only are they bad, 
They are hilariously and comically bad. The shit that they do and the mistakes that they make are so baffling and incredible that dare I say you couldn't write this shit. All of the horrible stuff they've pulled, be it out of malice or incompetence, is honestly pretty funny when you look at it from afar, especially with the benefit of hindsight. Remember all those infinite interviews where they just lied to everybody, knowing full well that they were lying? And I would say for any FPS going out forward, we will always have split screen in going forward. We have had to make the difficult decision not to ship campaign split screen co-op. Remember all the times that they completely fumbled in supporting their games and let the community just rot away only to do it again? God, that's kind of hilarious. I think new Halo fans are just too naive, too trusting of scam artists and cutthroat business practices. These are the kind of people used car salesmen salivate over. You lied to me, Mr. Lundgaard. You're a bald faced liar. Fucking please. A fucking liar. Where's my goddamn checkbook? Let's get this over with. There are a few arguments that 343 Shills will bring up to try and defend this company, and I'm here to address the big ones, because I think they are just hilariously tone deaf. Again, this video is my magnum opus. These are my thoughts and feelings towards this game and this awful, awful company, so I want all of this to be on record. First argument I've been hearing, especially recently, why do you blame all of 343? Shouldn't you just blame those in charge, those in management? This is an argument that has been making the rounds on Twitter since the fire 343 hashtag started popping off weeks ago. I also suspect that it's actually being pushed by real 343 employees, or at the very least, people paid by 343. I've never seen people try to say that because low-level programmers in a company had nothing to do with the controversy, that the controversy itself should be downplayed. Because most people already know that. Yeah, if a company does something shitty, we know it's not everyone doing it, you fucking moron. We weren't born yesterday like you. This argument is so bad, I don't think anybody actually believes this. Yet, hey, this is something 343 defenders will clutch in their hands because it's the only weapon they have. So no, I don't blame everyone at 343. However, I blame the studio as a whole. That corporation, that corporate environment is clearly not working due to some internal problems or what have you. This is a, a Reddit post that got deleted and he was just sharing some Glassdoor views at 343 and he basically says it's exactly what you'd expect. This is a good one here which probably explains why small changes are so hard to make in this game. Pros, big IP, whatever. Work for Halo, it's huge, right? But cons, brutal technical debt. So technical debt is essentially like when you're coding, right? If you make mistakes in the code and instead of fixing it early, you just keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it. Now you have baked in issues that are almost impossible to fix. So that's why you hear things like the UI has limitations and there's limitations on this. That's because they've racked up so much technical debt with just shitty code and just like quick fixes that it's like an absolute shit show to learn or even make changes. So they built the house on a foundation of shit. Advice to management. I have no idea how you'd fix a company that's broken. Now this is the company <laughs> who is in charge of arguably Xbox's biggest IP. So that's great. There is clearly something wrong with 343. That is a fact. When we talk about about firing 343, we aren't talking about burning down the entire fucking office and everyone inside it. Are you crazy? We're talking about removing 343 from Halo, separating the two. Just get rid of 343 once and for all. They clearly don't want to make Halo, so stop having them make Halo. What's so crazy about that? 343 is a bad studio. I had people come to me like, yeah, can you watch this video and this guy's shot registration shit? I was like, yeah, sure, let me see it. And I just started laughing, literally, like, out loud at work. Just laughing. Somebody at work showed you this? Yeah, somebody was like, yeah, you should look into the Halo 3 shot registration. I was like, uh... When was that? Like, in, like, uh, February. If Dursky was able to do this freely, without any fear of being fired, what kind of environment is going on at 343 to allow this? And how commonplace is this really? So here is a great example of what I'm talking about when I talk about how 343 is always lying and they're always like very good about it too. Honestly, it's a little impressive just how Weasley they are. This is a tweet by John Unishek from a couple years ago. Unishek who is for whatever reason highly regarded within the Halo community, like people seem to just like him, even though this right here should prove why he is kind of a scumbag and he is simply just a PR mouthpiece for the giant company at work. This is him responding to the codings controversy and it is remarkable just how fucking sneaky he is with his words. He is trying to downplay the whole codings controversy, but he's also not really denying it. 
In fact, in this particular tweet, he does something very insidious in which he implies something while actually also stating what he really means. The assumption that a lot of people got from this at the time was that a good chunk of the armor coatings and possibly armor combinations themselves would be purchasable, but they'd also be unlockable through just gameplay without having to spend any money. The idea that people had was, oh, you can buy coatings, you can also earn them too, simply because he says purchasing them is not the only way. What he's actually saying, which again, just kind of ties into just how insidiously deceptive everyone working at 343 is. What he's really saying is that not every coding can only be unlocked through purchasing. Meaning, what he's really saying is what actually ended up happening in the full release, which is that a vast majority of the armor coatings and just armor customization in general has to be bought or purchased. Either purchased from the store or unlocked through a battle pass, which you also have to buy. Instead, there's only a tiny proportion of customization options that can only be unlocked through gameplay. This is what I'm talking about right here. These fucking bald faced liars working at 343. I just want to stress, this is what 343 is all about. And they have been doing this since day one. So every time I try to stress how scummy and skimy of a company 343 is, think of this guy. Think of this Twitter post right here. Never forget how deceptive these guys will be no matter what. Anyway, fuck you, Unishek. Another argument I've seen a hilarious number of times is, well, if we get rid of 343, won't that just mean no more Halo? Do you really want Halo to go on hiatus with no new games? Yeah, I do. How stupid do you have to be to think that releasing a game over and over without having any time to let audiences and even developers themselves catch their breath is a good idea? Franchises need breaks. They need hiatuses. They need to be put on ice so they can simmer and cool off. I've said this many times in the past, but sometimes a game being left alone to be enjoyed over a long period of time is the best thing that can ever happen to it. People take time to appreciate things. They need time to explore it, to try and uncover exactly what about it works, and maybe what doesn't. It takes years, even decades, for some games to truly solidify in our brains. It took me 10 years to gather my thoughts on Halo 4 and to put them all together, because I needed that amount of time and that amount of hindsight to truly see what that game was and what it meant to me as a failure in game design. And here's another thing, humans have recency bias. We have FOMO. The latest new thing comes out, and oh boy, do I want to play that new thing. This new thing is the best, way better than that old thing. I'll say I think Halo 5 uh, is one of, if not the best, multiplayer versions of Halo that we've uh, ever No played. argument there. Then you give it time, time and reflection. And in no time at all, that thing that used to be brand spanking new will seem old and dated. When you force a developer to keep pumping stuff out, it's hard to gauge what truly made their older games good. You don't have time to truly analyze how a game mode stands the test of time. You don't know what features of a game will be fondly looked back at and which ones will just be forgotten and pushed aside. Hell, I kept praising Bungie in their glory days, but even they stumbled every now and then. They definitely made some mistakes that, had they taken their time, I think they could have solved no problem. Yet they themselves were rushing it, just to get out of their contract with Microsoft. To me, this is what Halo needs more than ever. I swear to God, if Halo takes a 10 year hiatus right now, 343 gets disbanded or at least thrown to something else, and then in 10 years, a brand new studio takes over to reboot it, hey, that is way preferable than what we have now. So yes, I do want Halo to go on hiatus. 343 and Microsoft have done so much damage to Halo that I'm starting to wonder if this series is even recoverable. Like seriously, who the fuck is going to be excited for another 343 Halo game after this? A few dedicated weirdos, sure, but most, if not virtually all players, they're just going to move on to something else and honestly I don't blame them. Halo is over. It had its chance. It's finished. What the hell do you think 343 can do to salvage it at this point? Again, I love all the naive, hopeful midwits trying their best to insist that Infinite needs a few changes to be good. Oh yeah, Infinite just needs a little bit more stuff to be a great game. Like a complete overhaul of the roadmap, buttloads of content, tons of fixes, and just a complete restructuring of 343's entire management team under better supervision to create a less shit company. Oh really? Is that all? Just that? It's like you have a house that's completely wrecked, the windows are smashed, a bunch of the walls are missing, the basement is flooded, and a few squatters have moved in and are dealing drugs. And then you have some dork, 
let's call him Joe, looking at it and saying, oh yeah, all we need is just a trip to Home Depot and a new coat of paint and it'll be good as new. No, there's no saving this. The building needs to be condemned. You gotta tear it down. All these morons thinking that 343 isn't the problem clearly haven't been paying attention the last 10 years, have they? All the times 343 has lied to us, has scammed us, has put out lazy content, and has just let the brand rot away until it becomes a joke in and of itself is completely lost on a lot of these people. That's why ultimately I don't think there's any saving Halo until you get rid of 343. When someone gets stabbed in a crime scene, you don't go in and try to resuscitate them. You go shoot the guy who stabbed them. God, people are so desperate for 343 to be redeemed. Hey Microsoft, give Halo to somebody else. Seriously, go give it to anybody other than 343. Hey, you know what? Microsoft recently acquired Bethesda and its subsidiaries. Why not give it to its software? I've played Doom Eternal and that game was pretty good. So they've proven they know how to make a solid sci-fi shooter with beautiful graphics. A well-optimized engine that plays as smooth as butter, gameplay that's fun and intense, and levels that are detailed and well-crafted. They also aren't afraid of making solid, linear, level-to-level single-player campaigns. Last I checked, they didn't turn Doom into a Far Cry clone. Of course, I don't want Halo to be a super-fast Doom-style arena shooter. Halo is much more slower-paced, a bit more methodical and story-focused. But I do get the impression that the current guys at id would at least put an effort in if they made a Halo game. When id made Doom 2016, they weren't made up of the original team that made OG Doom. I mean, there were a couple carryovers, but they were mostly developers who came on long after. Yet they were so respectful to the original games that they made something that was wonderfully nostalgic and authentic. When they made the Doom reboot, they clearly went back and paid respects to what made old Doom great. They weren't afraid of making Doom 2016 unique and weird in the modern age. They kept Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal sprawling mazes with goofy enemy variety, tons of weapons, and little to no emphasis on cutscenes or quick time events. It was arcadey, it was fast, it was awesome. You get the impression that the studio is full of a bunch of geeks and nerds who grew up playing those exact type of games and are clearly reverent to them. So I say again, give them Halo. Sit id Software down in a room. Show them gameplay of Halo 1, 2, and 3. Tell them to make a Halo game that is faithful to that old trilogy, and how it looks and how it plays, and then let them go to town. I'd bet they'd make a pretty solid Halo game if they were given the freedom to. They seem like they'd be respectful to those old games, and I think they could easily replicate that old, slower style of combat into a modern reboot. Maybe with some slight additions, some new bells and whistles, but still retaining the spirit of the old games. That's literally what they did for Doom. You can disagree with me, but at the end of the day, I think they'd make something better than anything 343 would be able to put out. There's this idea that Halo needs to change, that it has to adapt and become something new and different. This is a common sentiment I've seen with a bunch of newer leeches trying to join in on the community. People who want Halo to be faster paced, to be open world, to be a battle royale. I don't want this. Nor do I think Halo even needs to entertain this. Halo is Halo. It has its gameplay formula, which, while different, does hold up. It's not a generic first-person shooter that so many normies want it to be. It's something unique, and it's why so many people still replay old Halo games to this day. It's why people still play Halo 2's sweaty tryhard multiplayer, or Halo 3's fun chaotic sandbox. Halo has its identity, and that's something neither 343 nor its detractors can get rid of, no matter how hard they try. I've seen an ever-growing minority of quote-unquote Halo fans trying to say that Halo needs to evolve to stay popular. They'll say that it needs a battle royale, it needs a live service model, it needs a battle pass. Well, I'm here to say, no, it doesn't. Halo simply needs to be good. It has to be fun, and it needs a solid foundation to stand on. The very people who want Halo to be more like Fortnite or Apex were the exact same people years ago who wanted Halo to be Call of Duty. Back in the day, these would have been the exact same people who wanted Dead Space and Resident Evil to be like Gears of War, or for Fear to be like Call of Duty and Gears of War. They are the same people who want weird, unique, wonderful games to conform to something safe and generic. This is what has killed Halo, the desperate need to blend into the crowd. Uh, Call of Duty's popular, let's make Halo Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is popular, let's make Halo Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Oh god, Fortnite, open world games, free to play games, and battle passes are popular, let's make Halo Infinite all of that. Well, I for one am sick of it. If Halo can't have its own identity, then it simply won't survive no matter how many resources you dump into it. It's gonna take a confident studio with a good track record under their belt to step in and return Halo to its roots. Hey, 
id software they were originally going to make doom 4 into a safe generic call of duty clone in fact i am willing to bet that those very same QA testers and focus groups who were demanding that the next Doom be a Call of Duty clone are the same people who demanded games like Halo 4 and 5 to be generic Call of Duty clones. But unlike those other games, Doom 4 was scrapped because id Software had the guts to say, what are we doing? Is this really what Doom fans want? And they ignored those naysayers. <sighs> I have learned to ignore such naysayers when quelling them was out of the question. So they got rid of everything and they started over, making Doom 2016, which at the time was a pretty big risk since old school fast paced arena shooters were mostly relegated to the indie scene and only a handful of middle market games. The idea of a major triple A game fully embracing an old, seemingly dated style of FPS games was unusual and risky, yet it paid off dramatically. That game single handedly revived the Doom IP, and I would argue it has never been more popular than now. It's got itself a highly profitable reboot and a sequel to that reboot. Something I guarantee would never have happened had id Software been too weak to keep their integrity and to stick with their roots. If we had gotten the original Doom 4 that was more like Call of Duty, I'm betting we wouldn't even be talking about Doom right now. And I think that's the word you should remember when I talk about the difference between 343 and studios like id, or even a studio like Old Bungie. It's the word confidence. 343 and Microsoft do not have that. Halo kept course correcting every step of the way until Infinite launched, and as a result, it is a complete identityless mess. A boring pile of corporate slop that no one wants to play. It was too afraid to truly commit to returning to its roots. Instead, 343 just wanted it to blend in amongst the rest of the crowd. That's all I'm saying. You need a developer with a clear vision, reverence towards the old games, and a strong enough will to actually see that new game through without chasing trends. So Microsoft, get Halo out of the hands of 343. Just give it to somebody else. Give it to id, or literally any other studio for that matter. Now I keep mentioning id software because honestly that's the first one that comes to mind, but there are a ton of other studios that they can choose from. Studios that I think could develop a better Halo game than 343. Mainly because there are a ton of other studios that have made better games than 343. Remember, 343 is 0 for 3. Or 0 for 4 if you count MCC. So any game studio that is responsible for making at least one good game is leagues ahead of them. Microsoft also owns Activision, and I've seen some people saying they should give it to Infinity Ward or Treyarch, which I absolutely do not want. Instead, give it to a smaller studio within Activision's clutches. There are so many small developers inside Activision that are stuck making content for Call of Duty. Go revive one of those studios, dig them up, and put them on a real game like Halo. Hey, one of those developers is High Moon Studios. I would love to see them make a Halo game. War for Cybertron and Fall of Cybertron were great. They also had some pretty awesome multiplayer too. Smaller budget action games with a ton of soul. I bet they'd get co-op up and running for Infinite way faster than 343 could. Or hey, another studio that I see Activision owns, Raven Software. Uh, yeah. I think these guys can make a pretty good Halo game. You mean the studio that has put out some of the best first person shooters ever made? Games with awesome single player campaigns and a pretty awesome multiplayer too? Heretic, Hexen, Soldier of Fortune, Elite Force, Jedi Outcast, and Academy, Singularity? I think their portfolio speaks for itself. Hell, I was ragging on why id Software should take over earlier, but damn, I think Raven might be a close second. They have had such a huge influence on FPS gaming itself, and they absolutely deserve a crack at the Halo brand, more so than 343. Hey Microsoft, give it to them. Let them make a fun linear single player campaign with a fun multiplayer mode full of content and no microtransactions. I know it doesn't sound as alluring as making a free to play open world Halo game, but hey, I bet it'll be far cheaper to develop too. Go rescue Raven or High Moon before they fade away into Activision's swamp, instead of what you're doing which is just keeping 343 alive through nepotism. Well, this is it. The end of Halo. 
at least for a good while. People are already saying that we need a fucking Halo 7 or even a Halo spin-off just to course correct yet again. I could see Microsoft maybe greenlighting a cheap mobile spin-off game or something like that, but a full-blown sequel after this mess? No fucking way, are you kidding me? They sat on this stinker for six years, they'll wait even longer before they put out another one, and I don't blame them. I've been saying it for years, Halo should have gone on hiatus since Reach. Instead they kept pumping out shit after shit with no time to course correct. What we're left with is a game that has a forgettable generic open world campaign, milk toast multiplayer, bordering on boring, and an awful live service model which is so bad that even if the single player and multiplayer were both amazing and fantastic, it would have dragged down both of them, and the lack of content on launch would have killed this game either way. I can't keep stressing how disgusting this game is as a business model. How much I hate free to play games or having to pay for armor pieces or having to pay for fucking armor colors. The fact that you have to pull out your wallet just to unlock cosmetics that were free in older Halo games. It's hilarious. It's sad. It's also exactly what 343 supporters deserve. To all the people who spent the last decade playing damage control, to all of you doofuses defending 343 every single fucking step of the way, to all those who said, uh, Halo 4 wasn't that bad, to all those who said, uh, Halo 5 wasn't that bad, to those who then said, uh, Halo MCC wasn't that bad, this is the game that you deserve. A game that is basically a middle finger to you and only you. I actually love it, I really do. I love how there now exists a crappy, boring game that serves as a monument to all the shilling and cope from the 343 Defense Force. From the beginning, since we saw that demo reveal two years ago, to now. To all the deluded morons who put blind faith in 343 to not repeat the same mistakes over and over again, this game is for you. Have fun with your boring multiplayer maps. Have fun waiting 12 months between content updates. Have fun waiting a year after release for co-op and forge. Have fun enjoying your seasonal content with amazing rewards like the color red. Have fun with armor sets that cost more than $10. Have fun with this game you guys, you've earned it. This is your game now. And every single time one of you shills try to sneakily uninstall Halo Infinite to try and distance yourself from it, I'll be there, rent free in your head, laughing endlessly. And hey, for the rest of you still playing Halo Infinite, at least you have integrity. If you shilled for Halo Infinite for the last couple years, I'd hope that you'd at least stick around for the game a year after launch. Otherwise, that'd just be embarrassing to remote and defend a game that you'd barely stick around for. So yeah, Halo Infinite to me, is actually really funny. It's literally a well-structured setup to a joke. A three-act structure, where something bad happens once, twice, and oh wait, is something good gonna happen this time? Nope, never mind. It's just another pie in your face. It's great. To me, Halo died over a decade ago. So Halo Infinite being bad wasn't a huge, oh my god, Halo's dead, reaction that a bunch of other people had. Instead, it was the reaction that you'd have of finding out a guy died 12 years ago was in fact still dead. Oh. Well, I mean, it's kind of depressing, but it doesn't shock me. He's still dead. So what do I see for the future of Halo Infinite? Well, if I'm being honest, we're seeing it. We're approaching a year after release and already we can see the pieces falling apart. Content updates are slowing to a crawl. The game has a bare bones roadmap. I genuinely think that season three will come and go. Maybe we'll get a season four and then that'll be it. Cause even if they do add in more maps, more game modes, who the fuck will still be playing? A progression system would probably be the biggest thing they could add. But even then, this is 343 we're talking about. They know full well that adding in a progression system will kill their store. What's the point in letting players use their real money to buy challenge swaps and double XP boosts if a player can just level up in a match for free? Exactly. I actually predict 343 will find a way to release a progression system that is designed to be fucked up just to enforce their microtransaction hell on everybody. If I had to be specific on what they're gonna try to do, I think they're gonna try to limit on how much XP you can earn in a day. Sort of like what Battlefront 2 EA Edition did way back when that game launched, or at least something similar. So I foresee that even if they add in a progression system, it'll still be broken, and players just won't have an incentive to play the game. Because why would they? Halo 2 offered a competitive ranking system and in-depth custom game support. Halo 3 and Halo Reach 
both offered even more XP progression systems, unlockable armor sets that didn't cost money, and even more custom game support with custom maps and game modes all on launch. And on top of that, they were at the very least pretty good games. Halo Infinite had none of that on launch. This is further compounded by the fact that the game is just meh, is boring. It has no character. There's nothing Halo Infinite has that no other Halo game has but better. Competitive multiplayer, custom games, community features, maps, campaigns, gameplay, all done better in any of the old Halo games. So that's Halo Infinite's trend. It's just all the way down to rock bottom. I foresee maybe a season four of new armor sets and maybe a new map. Then that'll be it. This game is already being worked on by a skeleton crew, best I can tell. At least I hope it is, considering how little content is being added to it. I doubt Microsoft will keep dedicating resources to a game that lost 98% of its player base. Halo Infinite will certainly not be the 10-year live service game that was promised years ago. Instead, I think it'll be abandoned at least by the end of 2023. I'd bet money on that. What, you think Microsoft will put a budget on a campaign expansion? Are you out of your fucking mind? Again, who the fuck will play it? Who will pay $60 for another lackluster Ubisoft tier crappy open world? Now you can do this sort of thing with Destiny or Warframe, games that are designed from the ground up to support these long editions of content. But Halo Infinite, with its trickle of a couple multiplayer maps once every year and lackluster armor sets, no fucking way 343 can keep up a schedule. Infinite isn't just dead in the water, it's already sunk to the bottom of the lake. To me, that's where Infinite is heading. Content updates that will barely make a dent in the player count. What's the point of an in-depth forge mode if the game itself is fundamentally flawed and broken? 343 has already tried this twice before, with Halo 2 Anniversary and Halo 5. Those games had Forge editors with scripting and advanced customization tools, and you know what happened to those games? No one cared, because the game itself was still shit. Exact same thing for Infinite, a novelty at best. Then everyone will go back to some other game, MCC probably, to games that are actually fun to play with fun gameplay. In a few years, when Infinite is literally dead, we'll probably get an announcement by Microsoft that they're ending support for the online servers, all those armor sets and shaders you bought will be worthless, and then the game itself will be shut down forever. That's genuinely how I see Halo Infinite's lifespan. I wish I could end the video here, but I can't. Now this part, I've had to write and rewrite a couple times, just because it was hard to find the right things to say. As you all know, this was a long video to make, and as I was writing it and slowly editing it, a lot, and I mean a lot, of news has come out from 343. Massive layoffs. Now 343 layoffs aren't anything new. Over the course of Infinite, we've seen plenty of leadership positions slowly get filtered out every few months or so. Hell, Bonnie Ross left a couple months ago, but now Joe Staten, along with a lot of other developers, have left. Now it's hard to say how badly 343 was affected, but all I know is that this is a huge deal for Halo. And what's amazing is that we have seen a ton of employees, current and former, putting both 343 and Microsoft on full blast. What I find funny is how everything I said in my Halo 4 video and my Halo Infinite Part 1 video turned out to be completely true. I joked about how 343 was constantly outsourcing their work, and guess what? That's exactly what they were doing. Which also explains why updates to Infinite are just non-existent, because they literally haven't written their own code. They gave it to some poor contractor who left a year ago. So once again, I'm throwing it out there, I was right from the start. As for the layoffs themselves, uh, I mean, I don't know. Do I care? Eh, kinda. The more I think about it, the more I realize who I'm only really caring for. The low-level programmers. The geeks and nerds at the bottom rung of the company. Somewhere in that studio, surely there must be at least one guy who cared about Halo, right? Like one guy out of the mass of mediocrity who actually had some soul left in him, even if he's just a low-level programmer. I feel for that guy. That one particular guy, whoever you may be, that's who I sympathize for. But then there's other people, those chuckle fucks who had cushy jobs and had no love for the game whatsoever. The people who let Halo quietly rot away and they had no initiative to save it or revive it. Those people? Uh, I mean, it sure caught up with you, huh? I still remember the Dursky incident. That's what a 343 employee is willing to say in public. Can you imagine what the rest of them are saying in private? That's the 343 I know. Not as the wholesome little developer trying to make Halo a better game, as people want to believe. No, this is 343. 
The scummy lying studio that tries to cheat its players around every corner and then leaves town like a cheap con man. That's the 343 that I think everyone should see them as because that's who they are. In fact, I find it utterly hilarious that with these layoffs going on, even though there are some people who are giving their sympathies to the 343 employees, there are far more people who are actually relieved at this news. They're relieved that this fucking corpse of a game might no longer be kept on life support. Because sure, collectively, we all understand that not every single person at 343 is to blame. We also understand that Microsoft is the one steering the boat. Yet 343 was never blameless. They made the games. They wrote the stories. They went out of their way to turn Halo into what it is now, a shell of its former glory. Microsoft and 343 are both to blame. I don't doubt that management was the one causing Halo's downfall. I also don't doubt that the people in charge were making bad decisions. But what do you want me to say? Halo 4, 5, and Infinite are still bad games. That doesn't change that. So you know what? I seriously, honest to God, don't care anymore. I don't care what happens to 343. I don't care who is brought on or who is let go. I don't care who goes on a weird Twitter rant blaming everyone but themselves. In fact, I think I'd prefer if people left 343. All you programmers and software engineers stuck working for a company that is genuinely terrible, you guys deserve to work at a place that will utilize your talents. I genuinely want you guys to work on a game series that you actually care about. Don't work at 343. Do not work at a studio that has dug its own grave. So that's what I think of the whole situation. Also, as if this whole situation couldn't be even more funny, there's talk about Microsoft working with AI to replace human employees. Which, first off, I don't like that idea at all, but I can't deny the fact that there is poetic irony to the idea of 343 getting replaced by robots, considering that's the exact plotline they tried to turn Halo 5 into. Anyway, yeah, I don't care anymore. Actually, I take that back. I'm a little positive. I'm excited. If 343 genuinely gets shut down tomorrow, I'm kind of more curious to know what's going to happen. Sure, Halo's future is uncertain, but uncertain is better than dead. 343 and Microsoft had their chance with Halo, and it didn't work out. So it's time for someone else to come in. There's also been talk of a Halo Battle Royale. Who cares? No one wants it. We also probably won't even be getting it, too. Knowing Microsoft, they'll probably can it within a year or two. I could be wrong, who knows? But me, personally, I'm done with Halo Infinite. I'm done with 343 and I'm done with anything past Halo 4. I've got my old games. That's good enough for me. People keep trying to cling on to the newer games. They defend them. They make excuses for them. They pretend they're not as bad as they are. But why? Why did people delude themselves into thinking Infinite would be this amazing return to form? Well, I think it's nostalgia. We want the days of Halo 3. We miss them. We keep thinking that those days can be relived, that we can go back to a simpler and, quite frankly, more appealing time in gaming. I get it. I really do. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want that either. I'd say most of us do. We miss those days. You can call it nostalgia because it is. It's nostalgia. We're always nostalgic for the things we grew up with. We're nostalgic for that window of time, before games started feeling soulless, before microtransactions were common, before free-to-play was in our vocabulary and before games were shipped and launched as incomplete packages. We all miss those days. Halo fans especially. We had it good. Game after game, each one great in their own right. An engaging world. Campaigns that were unique and fun. Multiplayers that were addicting and offered thousands of hours of replayability. Not to mention a healthy, lively community. And I miss it too. I miss the sniper matches on Blood Gulch. I miss the 1v1s on Lockout. I miss the Forge Chaos on Foundry. I miss being excited for every new Halo release, and not dreading it like I do now. But those days are gone. As much as you want it to be the case, we're never going back. These games, these companies, the industry itself is too far gone. You simply can't release a $60 game anymore with just a single player and a multiplayer. You need it to be a live service game. It has to have an open world, a battle pass, microtransactions, a battle royale. I hope the industry will eventually find its way back, but I'm not holding my breath. I understand. We'll never return to the days of Halo 3. And you know what? That's okay. Because we can at least look back fondly on the memories that we made and the good times we once had. We can be nostalgic towards it. That's also okay. Franchises die. Communities move on. Game studios change. Shift to owners. Get shut down. But we still have the old games to at least enjoy and cherish. I know it's sad to admit that Halo can never come back to how it was. But 
Guys, that's just the case. With 343 and Microsoft in charge, we'll never get us something as groundbreaking and passion-filled as old Halo ever again. A half billion dollar committee will never come close to a studio of geeks and nerds developing a game out of pure love and passion. That's just a reality. I think the first step is to just let Halo rest. We're always so desperate to cling on to hope that the next game will be better, that it'll be the one to save Halo. But it won't, and we all know it. Halo needs to be left alone. Maybe 10 years from now, another studio will come along and they'll be able to revive it. Maybe not. Halo was amazing. For a time, it was incredible. It was unique. It was creative. It was a force to be reckoned with. For a good chunk of time, Halo was on top. And now it's over. It's sad, but that's how it is. And it's okay to miss it. Because at the end of the day, to those who missed out, to those who sadly won't get to experience the days of Halo 2 or Halo 3, to those who never knew what it was like to experience a Halo Midnight release or the anticipation of a new title, to those who never got to experience the community in its heyday, to join in on Forge custom games, to play really intense multiplayer matches against another team, to enjoy an entire campaign start to finish in a single night with you and your best friend. To you, the only thing I can say is, you just had to be there.